Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome to this brand new video on string manipulation with Python. Let's get started. Now, we've all dealt with strings before, we understand how they work, how they're created, but the question is now what can you do with them? And Python has a bunch of different methods and functions and various things to allow you to manipulate the strings that we have. So I'm going to try to cover as many functions as I can in this video. Let's see how far we get. First of all, we're going to cover what escape characters are and what raw strings are. Now we've dealt with escape characters before, but escape characters are basically any character in Python that has a backslash and then a specific character. So backslash n represents new line. Backslash t represents new tab. Backslash backslash is the actual backslash character in strings. Applying this to an actual variable, we can see sent is equal to this is a backslash n and then sentence. And by doing so, if we print out sent or just type out sent like this, sent, we get this is a slash and sentence. And if you print it out, we're going to go ahead and see that this is a, and then we have a space sentence on a new line. Awesome. Now let's say that we want to ignore these slash ends. If you guys remember in our rejects video, when we covered regular expressions, we always placed our strings with an R in front. So our string looks something like this. Sent is equal to R and then in quotation marks, this is a slash n sentence. Now the immediate difference that you guys might notice between this slash n and this slash n is that one is orange and one is the green like the rest of the string. The R stands for raw string. All the rejects of expressions that we created had an R in front of it so that we ignore all those random escape characters that Python has. The R converts our entire sentence or the entire string to normal characters. It doesn't account for any escape characters that Python normally takes. So now if we hit enter and print out sent, you guys are going to notice this is a slash n sentence. The slash n isn't assumed as an escape character. Awesome. So those are two things we've covered so far. The next thing is the in and not in operations with string. If I have a string, let's go ahead and say a new sentence is equal to hello world. And I want to check, does a specific word exist in my sentence? I can go ahead and say hello in sent and that returns true. If I do something like hello, hi in sent, I get false. So you can go ahead and quickly check to see does a specific string exist as part of a substring in another string by using this in function, this sort of string inside of another string, true or false. Similarly, in and not in, you can use a not in function to check if it does not exist. So if I go ahead and say exact same thing, hello, not in sent, I'm going to get false because it does exist. So in and not in are two functions you can use to check to see if some specific string or word exists in a bunch of text. All right. Awesome. The next thing that we're going to cover is going to be four very, very common functions that you'll use in Python, upper, lower, is upper and is lower. Let's say that I have a sentence. Let's go back to a normal sentence. Um, I love blueberries. I want to convert this sentence to all uppercase. I can go ahead and use the Python function sent.upper. That converts all of my text to I love blueberries in all caps. Sent.lower converts it all to lowercase. I love blueberries. You can also check to see if your text is uppercase or lowercase by saying sent.isupper, that's false, and sent.islower is also going to be false. And the reason for that is because our I is capitalized in the beginning. So upper and lower are two functions that you guys can use to uppercase your strings and lowercase your strings simultaneously. Do whatever you want with them. Is upper and is lower is used as a true and false method to check to see are they actually upper or lower. Normally the uh, demarcation for these sort of like true and false functions is the is keyword. If you guys see an is keyword in your function, is this, is that, that is keyword normally denotes that, hey, this function is probably going to return true or false. Awesome. Now, similarly, talking about the is, there's a lot of different functions you can do with is. You have stuff like sent.isNum or is numeric. Is numeric returns you, is it a number? Obviously false. You can have something like is alpha. You have something like is decimal, is sent a decimal, stuff like that. There's a lot of different is functions you can apply to strings to check to see is it this or is it that. Great. The next thing that we're going to be covering is going to be the starts with method. The starts with function, you can apply to strings to check, does my string begin with this? Similarly to the dollar and caret signs that we dealt with in rejects expressions, we're going to be dealing with starts with and ends with with strings. 
let's go ahead and create a new string. Um, send is equal to um, Ruby is walking the dog. Okay. Now I want to see does my sentence start with Ruby? So sent dot starts with and then my prefix again passing a string in this. I'm going to say does my sentence start with Ruby? Hit enter. I get true. It does. And similarly, if I want to see if my sentence ends with dog, I can go ahead and say sent dot ends with and then pass in dog. So starts with and ends with are two very fun functions you can use to check the beginning and ending of your sentences. All right, fantastic. Now, another fun function that I love using, especially with string manipulation, is the split function. Whenever you have a sentence, let's say it's one giant sentence, maybe you want every individual word and then you're going to apply some other function to every individual word. You want to split that sentence by something. Let's go back to our normal scent. We right now have Ruby is walking the dog. Let's say that I want to separate every word in my sentence. Using the split function, I can go ahead and split it by space. The split function takes in the delimiter by which you want to split up every single word or maybe every single item inside of your string. So by splitting it by space, every single time that Python encounters a space, it's going to go ahead and remove it and store it as basically an array. So if I go ahead and say ruby.split, I get every single word in a list, ruby comma is comma walking comma the comma the comma dog in a list, which is awesome. Similarly, if I want to go ahead and use this um, array and reform it into a string, I can use a join function. So sent.split split up my entire sentence into five different words. I'm going to go ahead and store this. So split up sentence is equal to sent.split and then space. Okay. So now if I print out split up, split up sentence, I'm going to get Ruby is walking the dog. Now what I can do is I can say split up sentence dot join. And then by calling the join function, the join function will automatically. Oh, I'm sorry. We have actually have to join it with a specific keyword. So let's say that I want to add a space between every single one of my words. So I'm going to go ahead and say space dot join. And then I'm going to pass in my split up sentence. Awesome. So what the join function did was it added a space after every single one of my items. So Ruby space is space walking space, the space, space, the space dot. Great. So the split function is used to split up your string based on a specific delimiter and your join function is used to go ahead and append something to every single item in your list. Now the split function is very useful when you're dealing with CSVs. So comma separated values, you can use your split function to split by commas and get every single one of your values in a list. Um, a quick example of that would be, let's say data is equal to apple comma orange, orange comma fruit. Okay. Or let's say cherry. Now I'm going to go ahead and say data dot split. I could potentially split it by comma, but if you guys notice, I have a space after every comma. So I'm going to go ahead and say data dot split by a comma and then a space. And by doing so, I get apple, orange, and cherry with no spaces. Awesome. So that is join and split in a nutshell. The last function that I want to cover today, guys, is the strip function. The strip function goes ahead and removes all of that extra space that we don't want. For example, let's say that we have a string. Um, let's go ahead and say sentence is equal to space, space, space. This is a sentence. Okay. Now, if we go ahead and run the strip function, let's take a look. Sent.strip. We're going to see this is a sentence. All that extra space in the beginning is removed. Similarly, what you can go ahead and do is you can specify what, where you want to strip that extra text from. You can strip left or you can strip right. In this scenario, I'm going to go ahead and create a new sentence over here, add some space to the right, and then I'm going to go ahead and say send dot L strip. L strip strips all of the extra white space from the left. So now we have, this is a sentence with a bunch of space. Uh, simultaneously, you could do send dot right strip, and that will remove all of the extra space on the right. So the strip function is used to remove all the extra white space that you might have. For example, let's say you accidentally split your data with just a comma. So going back to data dot split and then pass in a comma, we're going to go ahead and get these extra spaces with orange and cherry. I could go ahead and then call the strip function on every one of these items to ensure that I have no extra spaces in my objects in my list. Anyways, fantastic job guys. This was a very quick rundown of some functions in strings. Let's do a quick recap. We understood what escape characters were. We understood how to hide those escape characters using raw strings. 
we understood the in and not in functions to see if a specific word or character exists in a bunch of text. We understood the upper, lower, is lower, and the bunch of is functions that exist with strings. And last but not least, we covered the split, join, and the strip functions in Python. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.